Welcome to this new Steel Division 2 gameplay video. Today, we're going to play Army General, the brand new single player turn based dynamic strategic campaigns. This is the fourth campaign of the game, Verona Vici, and we're playing as the Red Army. We are on July 3rd, 1944. The German army is finally receiving enough reinforcements to set a consistent defense in order to stop the tired Red Army's progression. But Hitler orders a counterattack toward Stopsy to reopen the road to Minsk. Our objective is to hold Stopsy and capture Baranovici. Each turn in the game is one half a day long. Every battalion in the game has a set number of action points. Action points can be used to move, attack a position, or perform specific actions such as deploying anti-air or digging in. An attack will need three action points, one per phase. The first thing to do is to assess the forces involved. By selecting a battalion, we have access to a different array of information. Below the name of the battalion, there are its characteristics, including the number of action points resupplied at each turn and the type of battalion, including the bonuses it grants. For example, this battalion is motorized, which means it can travel more miles per turn. We can also see that this battalion is deployed, which means it will have a bonus in defense if attacked. In tactical mode, it means the battle will be in breakthrough without defensive structures. If this battalion was fortified, the battle would be played with defensive structures. The battalion's composition shows the detailed number of units within it. These units determine the combat values of the battalion in each category, such as melee, armored, artillery, anti-air, and aerial escape. Each unit in the game has a combat value that will increase the battalion's skills. The combat value is influenced by several parameters, such as its veterancy. This value indicates the average quality of the units in this category. For example, the strongest German tanks will score a solid 25 points in quality. And finally, just below, the complete battalion's composition, where we can access all the detailed information about each unit within it. In this operation, our forces are mainly composed by infantry battalions with some armored battalions with roughly 4 to 1 ratio. On the top of the area, we're going to secure our position on Stopsy. This infantry battalion, well protected in forest, will guard the bridge. We're giving the order to dig in, which costs two action points, takes one turn to complete, and grants the possibility to deploy defensive structures if attacked. We're approaching our tank battalion in case our infantry battalion is attacked. It won't be optimal in forest, as tanks will be penalized, but we need protection. We're also approaching our artillery battalion, which will provide a nice bonus. We could use our recon battalion to keep an eye on the other bridge, but we prefer to use it to identify what's coming towards Stopsy. In this area, we could bypass this group of battalions and cut them from their supply line. Nevertheless, a breakthrough would secure the main road and give us access to this point, which is, as we can see with this flag, where we can call the 1st Mechanized Corps as a reinforcement. We'll get to that later. We're moving the infantry battalions forward and put them in forest as it offers a nice bonus. We won't have enough action points to both move our battalions and attack a position on this turn, as an attack costs three action points, one per phase. We are also moving our battalions forward in order to prepare them for a breakthrough. We're staying on the road as much as we can as it offers a movement bonus. Our first turn is now complete. Time to let our opponent play.
As we can see, it mostly stays in defense and brings some battalions to attack Stobsey. But we can only see movements of the battalions that are in sight. A lot is probably happening behind the enemy lines. We're receiving news from the front throughout the campaign. We are now in the afternoon of July 3rd, and the Soviet troops just liberated Minsk. Our action points are resupplied, but only for the battalions within our lines. A battalion behind enemy lines won't be able to be resupplied. Back in the Stopsy area, we could decide to move our recon battalion forward, but with a risk of cutting it from the front line, which would prevent it from being resupplied. Let's put it back in safety. As a general, we are able to call reinforcements from three Army Corps. All of the reinforcements are displayed on the top of the screen. In order to call reinforcements, we need command points, every turn bringing additional command points. As we are on July 3rd in the afternoon, two brigades are available. Before calling a reinforcement, we can check every battalion composition within it. We can deploy our reinforcements in the cities and villages we have captured. Two other corps will be deployable in different places on the map, but they will be available later. We can check their availability right here in order to prepare our strategy in advance. As we already have a lot of infantry battalions, we're deploying the first mechanized corps in this train station. The freshly deployed battalions arrive by train with two action points. We're bringing them to the front line. Let's prepare our first combat. First, we're giving the superiority order to the 347th Fighter Regiment that will limit the Germans' air force. These bars under each battalion's label give an indication of the battalion's strength, melee, armored, and artillery. We're attacking this position by right-clicking on it and make our battle plan. Each battalion that is close enough to join the fight will have a letter above it. This is the phase it will be able to join the battle. The phase is also determined by the remaining action points. Three action points for phase A, two for phase B, one for phase C. We're adding up to three battalions to the battle by right-clicking on them. The number of units, as well as the combat values, adds up to give us an idea of how the battle will play. From there, we have three options to solve this battle. Auto-resolve, semi-auto-resolve, and real-time tactical battle. When playing on auto-resolve, we will rely on the combat values of the battalions to make decisions. The after action report details, phase per phase, the losses in each camp. In semi-auto resolve, the battle happens phase by phase. At each phase, you can select the units that will join the battle. Each battalion has 50 activation points per phase. You can also auto-select the units and launch the resolution. And finally, we can choose to fight the tactical battle in real time. Before starting the battle, we can select to choose one, two, or all of the involved battalions, and to let the AI control the other ones. Moreover, we can also decide to move companies from a battalion to another. But beware, the available deployment and requisition points will remain the same per battalion, so be smart about it. 
When launching the battle, the game selects a tactical map and a game mode depending on the situation on the strategic map. Army General's tactical battle differs from skirmish in two ways. First, the economy is different. All tanks and anti-tank units are worth three requisition points. All the other units are worth one requisition point. Second, the deployment menu now presents the units per company. More than ever, it's important to take care of the units during the battle because, as you can imagine, every lost unit won't be available in the strategic campaign anymore. Finally, let's have a look at the top left of the screen where we can visit the operation status, the operations order of battle, the casualty list, Thanks for watching this video and don't forget to pre-order the game now to get your beta key.